Hey everyone, today we're here to talk about the essential steps to ADOS calibrations. But before we get started, I want to introduce to you our new tool, the OBD to reset button problem solver. We know that you get asked a lot, hey, can't you just plug the computer in and reset it? We, we've made it for you guys. Now you can get started and just make every problem go away at the click of a button. Now that we got the jokes out of the way, let's get started with the steps. The first one is the pre-calibration inspection. On every vehicle, you want to be aware of any vehicle history or accidents that may have happened prior to you getting the vehicle in your shop. If this is the first time this vehicle has been to you and it requires a calibration, you want to ask the vehicle owner as many questions as you possibly can to understand how you got to this point. Any failures that may have come from hardware or software can usually be found in TSBs in manufacturer information. Don't forget to check there before performing any calibration as it may require updates or new modules in order to correct the issue that you're facing. It's also worth noting that on some vehicles, you may consider purchasing a vehicle inspection report to find out any history on previous collisions that may have impacted the area that you're going to be working on now. However, the most important step to the pre-calibration inspection is the actual visual inspection that you perform on the vehicle prior to starting your processes for successful calibrations. I'm gonna walk you through things that you can see on any vehicle that may indicate that there's been damage there. This is a 2016 Subaru Outback, and Subaru does not have front radar sensors in US vehicles that I'm aware of, but they do have their eyesight cameras, which are very, very accurate stereo cameras. On a Subaru, you would not be looking for a radar sensor on the front bumper. But what you can look for is make sure that these lines all match. Under most circumstances, these vehicles leave the factory line and all of their body lines line up perfectly. With some having minor variations, but most, all their lines are good. Walking around the vehicle, you can inspect every line. And while you do that, you can look for paint imperfections. This vehicle is a little bit dirty. It's hard to tell regarding paint imperfections anyway, but this is how you perform a visual inspection. And if the car has blind spot, we would know that by looking at the mirror, heated blind spot, make sure that the rear bumper is also good because you can't see if there's been any damage to the sensor because it's in here. But if this has been replaced by somebody who may not have done a good job, you might be able to tell just by looking. This is how I would recommend you perform a visual inspection of the vehicle prior to starting anything related to calibrations. While performing your visual inspection, don't forget to look at the windshield to see if it's an original windshield. If you don't have an original windshield, you may have issues while calibrating. Also make sure that the area in front of the glass is perfectly clean. If not, it will definitely cause accuracy issues when trying to perform calibrations. Also make sure to clean the inside and not just the outside of the glass. Notice the difference in clean versus dirty, and this was cleaned just 10 minutes ago. But you can still see that the inside needs to be wiped down before we perform the calibration.
As you can see, performing a basic visual inspection can yield a lot of results into the car's history. We encourage you to perform a visual inspection on every vehicle prior to an ADOS calibration, always making sure to have attention to detail for the particular area that is being calibrated. If you're doing a front radar sensor, make sure that there is no visible damage, nothing has been changed, check inside, make sure everything has been connected and that the mount has not been deformed. Once you've performed the pre-calibration inspection, we highly suggest that you perform an all vehicle scan and check any codes that are stored in any module and make sure that they're not related to what you're about to do. We have seen many instances where outside codes can affect calibration being performed. Sometimes you have to just reset them. Other times you have to perform resets for the yaw rate sensor or any other sensors on the car that measure equilibrium, speed, acceleration, things of that nature. The next essential step is preparing your work environment. There's only one thing that every manufacturer agrees on, and it's the work environments all have to meet certain criteria, and they're all actually almost universal. We're gonna start with flooring. Every manufacturer specifically requests that you use level flooring. All of them allow for a slight deviation, understanding that there will be some form of a pitch, but generally it will be under 0.3 degrees. That is what is considered level based on how Toyota and Lexus define it for their bumper sensors. Ensuring that your floor is level is the most critical step in performing ADOS calibrations at your service facility. Not having a level floor is going to affect the angle of the target versus the angle of the car. Not knowing how to correctly compensate or if you even can compensate will lead to improper calibrations and improper calibrations are dangerous. From the floor, we move on to the lighting. Lighting has to be consistent and bright white lighting throughout your ADOS environment. If you have that, you will be able to achieve even lighting across targets like this one, which is a major step in having the vehicle identify the target correctly. Floor, lighting, no windows is next. Windows can affect sunlight into the sensors that you're calibrating. If you're doing a camera sensor, and you have a window here and the sun is rising in this direction or it's broad daylight and this is where the sun is, it's gonna refract into that camera and affect the accuracy of your calibration. Those three elements are the elements that your facility must control in order to achieve fast, accurate ADOS calibrations. Moving on from the facility and onto each vehicle, there are some staples that must be done. We're gonna start with tires. All tires must be set to manufacturer specification. Even though they may look okay, you do not know. And tire pressure sensors cannot always be trusted, but every vehicle by law has to have a tire pressure label. If it does not have this, you can go to any dealer and request it, or you can check Google and find it, or possibly your owner's manual will have it in the glove box. The second universal step to ADOS calibrations is your steering wheel must be center. If your steering wheel is center, the steering angle is zero, and that allows everything to align perfectly with the target once you've got it in place. The last vehicle related element that is universal is the wheel alignment. Most manufacturer instructions state that a wheel alignment must be performed when performing a calibration. Some have now removed this requirement. It is very important that you always check OE information to make sure you have the most accurate information for the calibration you're about to perform. I would just like to reiterate that it's very important that we don't skip these steps. These are the basic requirements for performing any ADOS calibration in any facility, anywhere in the world, really. The wheel alignment is subject to manufacturer information, but everything else appears to be a staple in all of the OE information I have read up to date. Overlooking any of these critical elements is asking to make your calibration inaccurate before you've even started. In short, if you're ignoring the basics, you're setting yourself up for an inaccurate calibration from the very, very start. 
These variables help you understand and quickly know that your environment is not the problem and there's something else wrong. And when you know that, you have the power to move forward in a faster manner and you can resolve issues and get calibrations done while getting paid for them. Moving on to the last essential step, I'd like to talk about equipment. Equipment is available in many, many different forms from many different manufacturers, but it's very difficult to understand what to buy, why to buy it, and what you're gonna do after you buy it. I can only tell you from personal experience, I've owned the Autel setup, the Texas setup, and I have a mix of OE tools. You're never gonna stop buying tools. What you get with an Autel, a Texa, a, a Bosch, a Snap-on, whoever makes it, is you're buying a stand and a target and multiple targets. You want to try and experience different levels of equipment before you commit, and you want to understand what it is that you're trying to achieve in your facility or what kind of work you're looking to not farm out anymore. Essentially, the choice comes down to what's best for you and your facility. I can make recommendations based on experience and I am very happy with my Texa kit, but that doesn't mean you will be. The questions you want any sales rep to answer is, do all my targets meet OE specifications? What support do I have from the manufacturer? What software support do I have from the manufacturer? and what vehicles don't work with your full setup. Regardless of which manufacturer's tools you choose to purchase, you wanna make sure that all tools are made to OE specifications, that if necessary, we can revert to OE measurements to try and resolve issues. If you don't have OE size targets, you cannot perform these tests. Additionally, you may decide that the investment into a full-blown ADOS system is too much for you and your shop at this time. However, if you know the kinds of vehicles that you work on the most, you can buy specific ADOS tools just for those vehicles. If you worked on Subarus, you can spend your money and buy an ADOS stand and buy the Subaru targets and be able to perform windshield and blind spot calibrations for a fraction of what a full system would cost but only you can decide what will work for you and your service facility. Focus on OE size targets, quality craftsmanship materials, and quality support. And we hope that you don't forget the lessons that we're here to teach you on the alternate set of tools to a wheel adapter set. At the end of the day, you're not paying for features. You're paying for accuracy and repeatability. And if the tool can't help you achieve that, then it's not the right tool for you and your shop. Thank you for watching the ADOS Checklist Essential Steps video. And we hope that you understand that after today, performing calibrations or fixing vehicles is not as easy as pressing a reset button. If your prep work, your environment, and your tools aren't right, your calibration is gonna be wrong. We're here to help you avoid that. Thank you for watching and have a great day.